<sighs> Long time no see. Today we are going to search for an answer for this question, what does an ethical hacker do? I think you all have some preconceptions and stereotypes which are coming basically from the movies and from the media, but what's true? Who are the hackers? This is an important topic because I still have a colleague, she doesn't like to speak to me Women. after she got to know that I'm a hacker. So now let's take a look at some movies where you could get your hacker stereotypes from. We had a rather good start with the war games in 1983. Hacking was mostly puzzle solving and beeping. But the war thing is fairly easy to believe apart from the beeping mainframe. <laughs> 12 years later, geeks were already a subculture. Hackers started to wear sunglasses for computer screens to deal with the eye-catching action. Every tool uses shiny graphical interface and makes sounds. If you hack deep enough, you unlock the CGI graphics, everything is an eye candy. Great movie though, where Angela Jolie had her standards still at the right place. You're not going into that computer shit now, right? Mm. <laughs> yeah. In 2001, hackers turn into sexy macho men who can probably even deal with John Travolta. We got rather far from reality at this point, but people desire bread and circuses. However, there was the need for a realistic approach which happened in 2015 with the ongoing series of Mr. Robot. The main character is a messed up introvert guy who mostly uses real world tools and approaches to get into systems. Absolutely recommended to watch. This is really important to distinguish between the black hat hackers and the white hat hackers. If I want to simplify this, the black hat ones are hacking just for fun and big profit and the white hat ones are the ethical hackers, they usually have a contract to hack a system. Hopefully for your better understanding I created an animation. Let's consider that you are the owner of this jewelry store. You want to secure everything from a limited budget. You buy a good enough safe, hire a somewhat dodgy guard, install security cameras with an alarm system and deploy security doors. The business is performing way better than expected, so you make the bold move to get the biggest diamond on planet Earth into your store, which attracts a lot of attention from all over the world. One day though, after everyone left the store, you get alerted that the diamond is missing. How is it even possible? So here's what happened. The diamond attracted the top-notch criminals. They remotely accessed the alarm system, which was on the same network as the cameras, so they could turn off your security systems. They knew that the security door installed has a design flow, which they can use to bypass the lock system with their special tool. Everything was open and disarmed within minutes. The rest is obvious. But what if you could have hired those robbers for a fraction of the money what the diamond worth and simulate the attack against your store? You would have learned all those issues without losing reputation and money. This is the reason why ethical hackers exist alongside with the black hat hackers. After we got to know that I'm an ethical hacker, the white hat one, you know, the question is, what am I doing for a living? So normally inside the company, which provides penetration testing services, there are different kind of teams and roles. This is really good if you have some customers. So first there are the client facing teams. I can simply write sales and there's something called pre-sales. If you know the technical aspects, you don't want to be in this team. Sometimes you need to be in this one. Not too often during previous activities, a client may require the ethical hacker to show off his skills, but these activities are less preferred as demonstrated with the help of John. <laughs> That's our guy. And if we move further, we have a project manager who is here to connect both sides. And then after a consultant is assigned to this project, he does the scoping, which is a crucial aspect of the project, gets broken down. An internal test, external test. You can have all the different types in one project. These can be assigned to different consultants. This is the most interesting part, in my opinion, but this is a huge and broad topic. So I will give you just a really short and small tech demonstration, which can be thought to a monkey really. But let's consider that this is my PC, because this is my PC, which I was using for video editing. I am preaching about this to our clients, but unfortunately I just left this PC and it's not updated. So let's hack it. For the discovery phase, I'm using Nmap, which Trinity used in Matrix 2. In those hacking gloves, Trinity. Really? You just need to specify 
your target. And this will be my own PC. And as we can see, it has at least three open ports. So those are three services what we can attack. After that, usually we are using a vulnerability scanner, which gives you all the known vulnerabilities which can be found in the operating system or the third-party software. Yes! Okay, so it takes some time, but after a while, you will see results from the NASA scan. This is the vulnerability scan. Here you can see that we have one critical and one medium issue, and all the others are informational. This is the MS-17-010 which came from the NSA leak, so the guys at the NSA, they used this vulnerability for a couple of years, I guess, and they could get in this easily, how I will show you, into any machine where they got access to this particular port. So now that we know our vulnerability, we just need to use the right tools. I'm using the Metasploit framework, which is a great help. Let's see how to use it. We need to use the specific module, you can see all the options for this module. Now we need to use a payload. And if we have everything set, we can just try to exploit. And we have a win. So we have a Metapreter shell. And as you can see, the user itself doesn't feel anything from this. So you can just open windows, use, use your machine as you normally use. So what can you do now? We can just dump my own password. It is one way that now we have hashes. Those are the passwords in, let's say, encrypted forms. You have a handy tool called Mimikets. So yeah, for the demonstration purposes, I set my password to password. Okay, but now things are getting real. Now we can just see my processes. So we are in the same workspace. And what can we do now? We can create a screenshot we can just spawn this calculator. Of course, we are not going to leave it there, just like that. And we can let our user know that he's been hacked. That's it, thank you very much. And what happens if they finish with the testing? You need to have a reporting team with the documentation templates and the work from the consultants. Here goes the report. If it's good, the whole project is good. Basically, this is how a project starts from a customer side, comes to the sales. There's a project manager. Of course, there are the consultants who are doing the scoping and doing the actual work itself, which can be on site or remotely. What I particularly like in this job is that it can actually happen that you go back from work in an environment like this. Yes, the birds are actually this loud. I'm not lying, it was this green in reality as well, not just the color grading. I'm about to set the one-handed drone flying bike riding record while not getting hit by a car. Apart from this, you can stay in a bread and breakfast in this lovely town where I have my good old friends the stairs. Stairs. A nice bathroom. And of course stairs again to the bathroom. I genuinely loved it. Just to be fair, I wouldn't say that it happens too often, but sometimes it's really good. Reporting and documentation team who are helping the consultants to generate a report which then goes to the customer and being discussed in the closing meetings. So before, back in Hungary, my job was this piece here. I was a consultant. I did internal, external, web app and other projects as well. This opportunity was kind of unique because now I have more roles. So what am I doing now? I'm on the pre-sales side the project manager, consultant. I am doing the scoping, documentation, writing the report, going to the meetings. I started everything from the ground zero. I'm building this team and we are reaching to the moon. I really hope that you enjoyed this episode as well and possibly learned something from it. But one thing is for sure, this is the end. But before you leave, of course, you can have a choice. 
Oh wait, no. Now you don't have a choice. The next episode is going to be about some money practice solutions. It's related to money, so hopefully you will like it. These are just some practical methods what I tend to use during my everyday life and I thought I would share it to you because maybe it can make your life easier. See you in the next one.